what I hope for Miranda is what I hope for any child around the world in the relationship with music and is to have a friend that is always there for, for her, that never fails, no matter where you are or how difficult teenager years could be or how frustrating college work can be, the music is always there for them. And the solace, the peace, the, the, the inspiration, the beauty accompanies the human being in, in the best times and in the worst times. So that's what I, I hope for her, that he will be the most faithful friend. You know how nowadays a lot of people talk about best friends forever. Music is really a friend that never fails. Alan, hi, welcome to the council. Nice to be talking to you today. Nice to see you again, Robin. I love your tie. It's very, very fetching and perfect for this conversation. Well, yes, I just came from a Rotary Club speech, so you know, I dress the role. <laughs> well, we want to talk today about a new project that you have going and uh, I know that the Santa Rosa Symphony has been wonderfully dedicated to education to bringing the new generation of classical listeners up so can you tell us about your new project Simply Strings? Sure it's now in its second year and it began three years ago and as you say we've had a major commitment to music education over the years you know divided into training young musicians and music in the schools and Simply Strings in a sense is a perfect way of integrating those two commitments on the part of the Santa Rosa Symphony. And uh, it came about uh, in the education department. One of our staff members uh, had done her master's thesis on El Sistema, which I think most people now know, it came out of Venezuela and uh, was a program of bringing about social change through music funded by the Venezuelan government. Most famous disciple is Gustav Dudamel was the music director of the LA Philharmonic. And so that became like wildfire throughout the United States. So now there's an El Sistema USA National Association. And when we looked at it, you know, as, as we look in most things is how could we bring that powerful, potent formula in a way that uh, integrates with what we're already doing so that uh, it makes the whole even better without it um, sort of becoming too overwhelming and cumbersome at the same time so that we could successfully implement it. And so uh, the board was very enthusiastic about it, uh, and we felt that uh, to do it right, we had to make a real commitment, a five-year commitment. And so we uh, interviewed a number of elementary schools in Sonoma County, because it's also a major commitment on the part of the school, obviously, even though it's of no cost to them. So the program, and so we, we centered uh, in the end uh, on uh, Shepherd Elementary School on the west side of uh, Santa Rosa. And the commitment, the program itself in a nutshell, is uh, every day, Monday through Friday, after school, two hours of violin training for 24 weeks during the school year. So it's quite intensive. Wow, that is huge. It's quite intensive. And so, you know, I, I think that uh, it represents for us a commitment on the part of the symphony, obviously on the part of the student, the school, and the family. And our sense was that kind of music immersion experience is what can really bring about the kind of substantial social change we all hope for. Uh, and, uh, you know, we didn't know how it would be received, but we put into place at the beginning some parts that we thought were essential. Obviously, you need to hire a really good music teacher and have a, a committed community engagement coordinator. Then we hired a family liaison, someone who was bilingual, who could speak to the parents about the program because the parents have to be involved. They have to sign on to support those children doing not only school work but also after school commitment. And the goal was 20 uh, students in the first year. And very happy to say uh, we got uh, 22. We also provide all the uh, violins, of course, as well, and all the curriculum material. And it culminated in the first year with this extraordinary performance of these young players on stage with what we call the tall orchestra, the professional orchestra, with Bruno conducting Ode to Joy. And at the same time, we uh, hooked up with uh, Carnegie Hall's uh, Music Institute, Wild Music Institute, and they have a national program called Link Up that you may know about, in which uh, they worked with us on the curriculum materials, and we worked with our elementary schools that are in other parts of our education program, providing them with recorders so that for a couple of months leading up to that performance, they learned Ode to Joy either vocally or 
uh, on the recorder. So it was this interactive audience playing, singing Ode to Joy while the 20 string players are up there with the full orchestra and Bruno conducting. And it was magical. I mean, people had tears in their eyes. Um, and yet, as I said, it's not just a one-year program. The concept is that the second year, hopefully many of those students will want to continue on through sixth grade. And each year we add another second grade. So this year we have two levels, second graders and third graders. Again, it's full, 20 in each class. And the hope is that, you know, they not only learn love of music, it's so much more than just that, that they learn how to work together as a team, they learn focus, they learn discipline, things that are not ordinarily taught uh, these days, uh, and they learn a love of something uh, that may influence them for the rest of their life, whether or not they become musicians. Uh, nevertheless, the opportunity is there when they graduate from sixth grade to audition for one of our four youth orchestras so that they could continue on if that's of interest to them. And, and, that, and so also, it's also creating a more diversity within our own uh, ed music educational training programs, which is just positive for everyone. Yeah. So we're all very excited about it. It sounds magnificent, and uh, I wonder what it's like to be in the room with all 20 kids playing the violin. Have you had that experience? Have you mm -hmm. been there? In fact, I'm going to have it again uh, this Wednesday. Bruno and I will go there. Yeah. Um, and uh, I can also provide you, we have a music video that includes excerpts uh, of some of those uh, children performing. And it's just, it's just, you know, it's sort of uh, bordering a little bit on chaos, uh, and yet there's also an excitement uh, and a, a commitment that's really wonderful to see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's pretty amazing. So one student would have the opportunity to actually ha be there for all five years. Exactly. Anybody who was in for this year? That's right. Huh, yeah. that would be great. So if we add 20 a year, you know, eventually, you know, if everyone kept going, which is not going to be the case, you know, we'd have as many as 100 students. Yeah. So that's a major commitment on the board of directors of the Santa Rosa Symphony as well, mm -hmm. you know, because it's all uh, free to these young people. Right. And each year we're having to add another music teacher, and in fact I just hired a teacher's aide the other day, and so there's a lot of resources necessary to make this program effective. Mm -hmm. So you need funding for that, and uh, one of the places that you went to for funding for this was the Community Foundation? Right, Community Foundation of Sonoma County. Uh, and we've had a long-standing relationship with the Community Foundation of Sonoma County, and they've been uh, supporters of various programs uh, for years, particularly in the area of music education. Uh, and so since they are aware of the quality of what we do, when we brought to Karen Demrist, who was at the time in charge of arts uh, support for the Community Foundation, and presented Simply Strings, she also was familiar with El Sistema and very excited uh, about the program and, and the opportunities it affords to those young people. So um, we submitted the proposal and uh, they've supported it now for uh, the, the two years we've had it. Do you th have a commitment that they'll do it all five years? or is No, we, we don't. You know, I, I'm not sure if they do multi-year commitments. Um, no, it's usually been an annual uh, request. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it uh, the way you work with them? Have you gone to them with your ideas or do they come to you knowing that they have a funder or an idea of something they want to do? Wouldn't that be lovely? Yeah. Uh, no, no, we've, we've come to them uh, with the program and uh, they've signed on. Yeah. Do you see, um, just talking, thinking about the foundation and their support for the arts in the community, I know that, that education is really important to them. Where, what is their commitment to the arts also? From your well, I mean, I, I think that um, it's changed over the years based upon their funding uh, support. Uh, I know for a while they had support from the Hewlett Foundation and the Irvine Foundation, and so instead of supporting particular arts organizations, they were supporting the Arts Council of Sonoma County to create more of a capacity building opportunity to support the arts. Then those grants ended, and, uh, and I think for us, um, mo most of the time, the funding has come from their education side of things, because I think they have very limited funds available purely for the arts. So it's normally come uh, through education and, and I, you know, I know that Karen is, is a very creative leader there and so I think at times they're reevaluating how they categorize the kind of grant support they want to do. So that may be changing in the near future, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But normally our music education it comes through the education 
uh, component of the community foundation. And also to some degree, in some years, they've been able to take advantage of, the, of uh, I think what are called donor is advised funds, right. where they know someone has a particular interest in your program and then they'll, they'll use those funds because it'll release some of the more generic funding they have for other organizations. When you made the decision to go with the school that you chose for Simply Strings, that was one of the important parts of this program to go to uh, less advantaged schools? Yeah, abs ab absolutely, absolutely. We were looking for a school that didn't have hardly any resources in terms of support for the arts or for music. Uh, and, you know, typically we would look at schools in terms of what percentage was under the federal uh, free lunch program. And so wanting to make sure that we had a school that had a very high percentage in that area that typically is a, a fairly easy way to identify people who come from less fortunate backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And when you were designing the program, what made you design it with all violins? Well, I think that uh, that's a good question. It, it came from uh, Christina Penrose, who's on our education staff. And uh, y you are correct in the sense that there are El Sistema programs that have uh, all the different instruments of the orchestra. Um, and I think we end she ended up uh, suggesting violins because it, 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 it presented sort of a democratic base basis in which it wasn't a question of do you like this instrument or that instrument. We're all going to learn strings together. And when you think of a symphony orchestra in particular, you know, that's the foundation of any symphony orchestra is the string section. And so in a way, if you want to build it on, on a young level, you sort of mirror what you're doing at a professional level. Does the Santa Rosa Symphony have a, a greater commitment? Are you more involved in education than most other symphonies? Or is this I mean, I, on par? No, I would, you know, without us having done any sort of formal survey, without a doubt, every orchestra has some kind of education program. And pretty much every professional orchestra has one youth orchestra. But there are very few that I know of that have four youth orchestras. Uh, and now there are sometimes freestanding youth orchestra organizations where they may have a lot of uh, kids because that's the whole purpose of that organization. But as part of a professional orchestral organization, it's rare to see this much of a commitment. And when I first came here 12 years ago, there had been a long-standing commitment to training young musicians but not as much of a commitment to music in the schools. And that's what changed in the past 10 years. And I think Simply Strings is the latest and maybe most palpable reflection of that commitment. Yeah. Well, it's a terrific, terrific so. project. I'm so glad you're doing it. Yeah, well, thank you.